next segment of Citizens Forum is a tape of a talk given a few years ago about a very important issue, the agricultural land reserve. When we brought in the agricultural land reserve in 1973, there were plans afoot at that time by the provincial government, Ken Kiernan, the Minister of Industry, was developing the Roberts Bank Superport, and they wanted to develop an industrial area that would run from Roberts Banks to Hope. That was the vision. And we had lost 12,000 acres of Richmond farmland. By the time 1973 came along, we were losing that much land in the Fraser Valley on Vancouver Island every year. If you can imagine the, the residential area of Richmond, we were losing that much farmland every year up until 1973. And we changed that with the Agricultural Land Commission Act. In September of 1957, however, I want to go back a little bit, because why did we do it? We knew about climate change. Most people think climate change was something that was just invented. We knew about climate change. We knew the world's population was growing. In September of 1957, the world's top climatologist, Dr. Sver Pedersen, who was the director of weather forecasting at the University of Chicago, told us, and I want to quote this, in the next 50 years, now 1957, think of today, 50 years ago, in the next 50 years, if the current warm trend continues, there will be some remarkable changes in the weather. Already the North Pole has decreased something like 40% in volume. If this continues, there will be very little summer ice left in the Arctic. With increasing population, increasing use per capita, we are already in a mild crisis. So for those that think that climate change just happened recently, we knew about it since 1957. This person, by the way, was a climatologist that planned the, the D-Day invasion to get a, when they had a break in the weather, weather and we won World War II. He was that prominent, and that was his prediction. His prediction has come true, and the world climatologists today are telling us we've got 30 years left, and we can expect des desertification, floods, wildfires, loss of farmland, and in many parts of the world, mass starvation. So we were right about the Agricultural Land Reserve in 1973, and we're right about it again today. And I thank you all. <laughs> today, the Agricultural Land Reserve is threatened like it hasn't been before in the entire 40 years. In my area, the Port of, of Vancouver wants 2,600 acres, that's a couple of, uh, about 15 or 16, 1,700 hectares, I guess, for port expansion. In my area, Langley wants to expand a university out on the farmland. In the north, the Minister of Agriculture thinks rodeos are more important than hayland for feeding cattle. <laughs> Pat Pym is the Minister of Agriculture. He really should be uh, labeled the Minister of Oil and Gas. Yes. But he's, the <laughs> but he's the Minister of Agriculture, and I don't think Pat Pym knows what his own ministry has recommended. And I suggest that he read the, the documents prepared by the BC Ministry of Agriculture over the last few years. The BC Ministry of Agri Agriculture tells us that if we were to feed the BC population, that by the year 2025, we must increase the amount of irrigated farmland in this region, the lower mainland Fraser Valley and South Vancouver Island, by 92,000 hectares. That's from the Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry of Agriculture tells us that in the interior of land, it is not poor range land. The class six lands, the class six lands provide fodder for livestock. The class five lands, four lands provide hay fields and, and grain fields and feed for livestock and in many cases some of those uh, lands that aren't as fertile as the Fraser Valley are good for grapes and for apples and for many, many other products. And he tells us that, that those lands are expendable. His own department says we have to increase production on those lands by 500,000 hectares, a million acres that were short by 2025. So he has learned what his own department knows. And I hope as Minister of Agriculture, he gets an education real quick. Yeah. 
The scene is unfolding today is rather frightening, and I mentioned 1957 for a reason. Our senior governments are intent on building pipelines, fracking the land, <laughs> but we're faced with pipelines, we're, we're faced with tankers. We had a demonstration in Richmond yesterday morning where my mayor of Richmond got up speaking against the jet fuel tankers, Panamax super tankers. that are three football fields long, they want to bring up the Fraser River to, uh, to drop off jet fuel. There's coal ships that want to go down the river, and the port itself wants to use the 2,600 acres of farmland to be backup lands for the shipping in and out of the fossil fuels. They don't think about where those fossil fuels are going to be burned. So on the one hand, we're going to destroy the farmland. On the other hand, we're going to increase the CO2 in the atmosphere, which is destroying farmland elsewhere in the world. We're told by the port that if we give them the 2,600 acres of farmland, they'll import all the food we need. <laughs> all around the world, the farmland is threatened. I think it's a, an absolute crime that farmland today should be threatened. I use a term that what we are doing today, or those that promote the destruction of our farmland, are committing future side. They're destroying the future of our grandchildren, even our children, in terms of their ability to have fresh, wholesome food and enough food to survive. Well, compare the frightening vision of spiraling climate change with a different vision. And a lot of the communities today are in part of that vision. Uh, six years ago in Richmond, a, a delegation came from the United Nations. And they said, if you develop urban farms and farm school, we want you to show the world that this can be done. And so we have set up farmland in Richmond with a farm school. The city of Richmond is the biggest farm owner in Richmond. Now we own about, about 350 acres. We're teaching young people how to farm. We're providing agricultural land for children, or young people to farm on, incubator farms, and I know that some of the communities are doing it here. I can give you a long list of things you can do at the local level. This is what our Minister of Agriculture should be doing. The yeah. Land Commission should be... Yeah. The Land Commission should be doing what we intended it to do in 1973, which was to set up a land bank buy up the lands that are threatened, lease it out to young farmers, get the land into production, and stop the speculators that are taking the land out of production, letting it grow weeds, and claiming it can't be farmed. Yeah. Believe me, yeah. that yeah. there isn't an acre of farmland in British Columbia that's in the agricultural land reserve that cannot be farmed. <laughs> And we banned uh, cosmetic pesticides. And we're now collecting the leaves and the lawn clippings and making compost. We're going to have so much compost that we can almost pr provide compost for every farm in the Lower Mainland, if not all of BC, if we could pluck it there. There are solutions. Save our farmland. Stop Pat Penn. Thank you very much.